from the Silicon Valley Media Office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special presentation. This is Cube Conversations. This is Dave Vellante. I'm here with Colin Mahoney, who's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Big Data for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Colin, great to see you again. Thanks great to see you in. too, yeah, thank you. So Always the Big Data here. Conference, B BDC, yeah. uh, what started as the Vertica User Conference, we were there for the inaugural one three years ago. The Cube is really excited to be back, and uh, you have been there since the beginning. You were part of the Vertica acquisition, so in the early days, this was uh, you know, kind of a little you know, roll the dice crapshoot, and it's turned into one of the the best, most intimate big data conferences in the business. Yeah, it's amazing. It's hard to believe that uh, this will be our fourth big data conference, as you point out. And e three years ago when we did this, we'd always heard from our customers that they want to learn from other customers. They'd always heard stories about each other. They knew there were use cases that they shared. They wanted to get together. And we, we set up a lot of these informal conversations between our customers, but uh, we took a chance. Everybody told us actually we were crazy to do this type of thing. Um, but we took a chance a couple years ago, and uh, we sold it out. You know, it was uh, we we could have had twice as many people there, and it was so clear to us that the conversations that people were having, what they were learning about, um, really were impactful and important. And uh, we've we've continued it. It's grown significantly every year. This will be the the largest it's been, but we still keep it the right size. It's really focused on on what we do and what our customers do. We do a lot of big data shows, as you know, and uh, you know, it's like, remind, remind me, the early days of Hadoop world, it was a lot of practitioners and a lot of really substantive conversation, and now it's become a big marketing event. BDC isn't a yeah. marketing event, and you've succeeded, you've not polluted the event with a bunch of marketing BS. Talk about that, how, how have you succeeded in doing that? So, so we don't allow any marketing presentations whatsoever at the Big Data Conference, and I, I think that is the key, and that is what has made it so successful. We have our engineering team, we have our customers that are doing real things. Those are the folks presenting, as well as you know, some incredible keynotes that we always bring, um, but it's very real, and I actually think it reflects the big data platform organization that we have, we probably don't make nearly enough noise about what we do. We're not very showy, we're not very flashy, but we are the company that delivers and, and we empower some of the most significant analytic environments. And you know, don't get me wrong, our marketing team does a phenomenal job with this conference, but what they do is they set up the venue, they get everything lined up so that those conversations can happen and we can talk about real technology, real business use cases, and real issues. Let's talk about uh, the marketplace a little bit. So when Stonebreaker came up with sort of the idea for this you know, columnar database, if not the first, one of the, the, the first, solving the problems of, of relational database management systems and, and performance specifically, um, and then the market took off, Vertica was, was part of that tailwind, uh, and then this whole Hadoop thing came in. So, yep. so t take us back a little bit to the progression of Vertica and then you know where you, you know, became HP and what's happened in the market since then for the last you know f five seven years. Yeah, I think so. It, it has been an incredible renaissance of just all different types mm. of innovation and technologies and, and Hadoop being a huge part of that. Obviously, um, I would say what we did was we always focused on what we were really good at and we knew our strength was on the optimizer, the execution engine, running the best analytic database engine we could for Vertica um, in this market. And there were a lot of tendencies and pressures for us to branch out and try to become a massive Hadoop platform and a database engine and all these things. And instead we said, we know what we're good at, let's focus on what we're good at, but let's integrate with this open ecosystem of uh, lots of open source vendors, whether it's Hadoop, whether it's Kafka, um, you, Spark, you name it, but let's stick to what we do well. And what's really funny now is, what we see in the market is that each of these technologies has sort of found their place. I think people know that Hadoop is not a panacea for everything, but it's very good at some things. And we have now extended our platform to be able to run seamlessly on Hadoop or to be run, able to run seamlessly in the cloud. And that focus, I think, is what has really helped us be successful because we know what we're good at and we know more importantly what we're not necessarily good at. So we try to make that ecosystem work a lot better um, but it is amazing watching sort of the ups and downs of some of the hype cycles 
of things like Hadoop and, and lots of other technologies that are out there. Let's talk about what some of the customers are doing. So over the past several years, we've had some great customer stories on, on theCUBE and you've presented uh, at, at the conference. I mean, guys like Etsy, Wayfair, in the early days, Zynga yeah. was kind of a, a showcase yep. customer. NASCAR has been on. What are customers doing? Maybe you can even add a couple of other you know, examples. Yeah, so some of those customers are going to be here. I mean, we're going to have customers like GlaxoSmithKline, we're going to have customers like Sabre, we're going to have Ameripride, Nimble Storage, um, DreamWorks Animation, so many incredible customers that are um, just changing the game when it comes to data and analytics. Um, you know, one company too that um, we're uh, sort of incredibly proud of as a, as a customer, and I think the whole world has seen how they've just created an entire industry is Uber. And uh, we've got uh, Corey Kendrick coming from uh, Uber who's going to talk about a lot of the data science work that they do, a lot of the policy things that happen, and just implications and, and the power of what you can do with information. Um, we have the Spanish Ministry of Defense coming to talk about how uh, they, they counter terrorism using these types of technologies. Uh, we've got the New York Genome uh, Institute talking about how they fight cancer uh, through big data and analytics. So the use cases, whether it's private sector, public sector, uh, whether it's healthcare, whether it's telco, Everybody is taking information and leveraging it in a way that they can help their organization or help an individual do something better, faster. And um, you know, with regards to people, I think that's one of the most exciting things too. One of the key themes this year is the power of people because one of the things that we learn, as much as we love the technology, it comes down to the people. And so we've got two phenomenal speakers. We've got Phil Black, uh, former Navy SEAL, Navy SEAL instructor, entrepreneur, he was on Shark Tank. Um, when you talk about somebody that has been able to reinvent themselves physically and mentally, sort of hacking themselves, there's no one better than Phil. And then from an organizational perspective, we have the author of the High Velocity Edge, Steve Spear coming, talking about how organizations have to constantly take that feedback, close the loop, using data, using a whole bunch of other things, and people to enhance what they do as a company. And I think whether it's the customers that are coming that I've, you know, some of whom I've talked about, um, you're going to see in their presentations, not just presentations about technology and cool things that they do with it, but really about what do they do with that technology in, in combination with people, which really gets at the heart of culture, and how do they change the world? And we've got some incredible examples. You know, Corey will talk a lot about the Uber example, but incredible examples of companies and people that are, are, are just changing the world every day. They always have some fun outside speakers. I remember Billy Bean came, yeah, and yeah. he was obviously the poster child for data in sports, and, and you're right, it's, it, it's not just about the tech. In fact, most of the conversations we've had with the customers, I, I would say, let me, let me take a stab at it and you can you know, add some color. It was, it was, it's groups of people that were sort of in between the business and the technical world that were frustrated with data warehouse. It was, they would describe it as a snake swallowing a basketball and just struggling to keep this aging infrastructure going. And then all of a sudden, this new technology opened up a whole new world of possibilities and they got excited about the business impact yep. of what they could do. And there's so many examples, all the companies that you mentioned and that we've talked to in theCUBE, uh, how they've transformed their business and now are driving either new revenue opportunities, you know, trying to solve, solve the cancer problems, uh, 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 nature's con you know, nature conservancy issues, and things of, of that nature, um, which are just really exciting for people to watch, not just uh, ad tech, you know, yeah. uh, but really branching out into society. What's your take on that? Yeah, well, and it's funny that you bring up ad tech because I think that as, as annoying as some of the personalization ad targets mm -hmm. are that we see, the reality is that industry has innovated so many different things that have now permeated into other industries. So right. the personalization of healthcare, for instance, a lot of what they've learned in terms of the algorithms, much of that has come out of the advertising space. So um, I think every industry, and to your point about these, these folks in these organizations who think different, you know, these, these people who are frustrated with the status quo, who understand that there is a lot of information out there that should be at their fingertips to help them make decisions and, and make those decisions with as much data as they can. And if they make the wrong decision or if something changes, 
it's the ability to change as an organization and change as a person. And I think what you find with almost every single one of our customers is they have that trait. Somebody took a bet on us, even in the earliest days, you know, back when I, I've joked with you in the past that, you know, the first version of Vertica, you couldn't delete data. You know, we basically asked our customers to come on a ride with us, that we were starting from scratch and building this thing. And whether it's Vertica or it's idle, you know, from on the unstructured side, which is our other engine on the big data platform for unstructured information, both of these have roots in academic institutions and then we commercialized them and we went and we partnered with customers who took a bet on us and now they're doing some incredible things. And what we're trying to do is stay focused, deliver and keep delivering the value and we've, you know, we've got some, some great announcements coming on that front as well from the innovation side um, and help them as they work through the challenges and the opportunities, frankly, that are coming down the pike. I think every business, every organization is in the data business. I don't think there's any way anybody can avoid that anymore. And as, as stewards of that, as folks that are, are in the mix to power and help them through it, that's what they're, we're, we're really there to do. And that's what the Big Data Conference is and about. And of course, we're going to be interviewing you uh, next week yeah. at BDC, so I don't want to go too much into the topics that we're going to cover there, but one of the challenges that people talk about all the time is the complexity. And you certainly saw that with, with Hadoop and just the number of open source projects and people struggle with that. Um, you, are you seeing progress being made there? Or is HPE, you know, what are you guys doing to help you know, solve that complexity problem. Now, you guys were more of a solution anyway to begin with, but uh, are you seeing that you know problem, and is the industry addressing it? Yeah, I think I, I do think it, it is a huge challenge for the industry. Part of that renaissance of innovation is that you have so many disparate technologies that are popping up, and a lot of them are rough around the edges. You know, you've got to be a developer, a programmer, to really get them up and running. This is coming at a time where the business users just want answers. They want to have conversations with their data and they want to move the business forward. So it's creating a conundrum where you have a whole bunch of technologies, not a lot of solutions. And so part of what we've tried to focus on with our platform, and I, I won't say we're perfect by any means, but I think you know, we, we constantly strive to make it better, is we're trying to wrap more around some of those technologies to deliver them as part of the solution. So I mentioned Kafka. Integrating Kafka natively with Vertica helps you bring data right in or right out of Vertica seamlessly into that ecosystem. Um, and the good news about the ecosystem often around many of these technologies is that the openness is allowing a lot of people to develop on top of it, to package around it. So I do think it's getting better, but I think that there are so many different projects out there, so many different technologies that it's a constant battle to, to stay ahead of that. And frankly, as much as enterprises love open source and the notion that you don't get locked in, I think the reality is you are locked in, whether it's open source or not you're going to develop on something and just by making that decision you're locked in and so they need to understand that there is a a, a, a parent you know parental guidance behind these organizations and that's able to stand up and support them in what they're doing. And I think that's the role that Hewlett Packard Enterprise plays in so many different scenarios. Well, it was a really important point because the euphoria around big data led everybody to sort of hop on the bandwagon. A lot of customers went in, into that sort of blindfolded to the open source you know, world. And what's happening is you're starting to see consolidation. You know, some companies aren't going to make it and you could be stuck you know, with this open source mess that you have to deal with. So you're saying, okay, we bring adult supervision, but you guys are also participants in that open source world. It's not like you, you don't you know, embrace that. So we are. it's a nice balance and, and, it's, and it's a good hybrid. It, it is a balance and, and I think the hybrid approach is important. I think um, what every company has to deal with is we are in the business of delivering revenues and profits and those sorts of things and sometimes the open source models that you see out there um, don't easily do that and so there's a timeless model over the last decades that you can see in any type of company <coughs> and if we can't achieve that if, if an open source company comes out and it's just bleeding cash that gives a lot of companies concern do I want to bet on this technology so I think that's something that Hewlett Packard Enterprise brings that's really important. Well, too, we get, like say, we <coughs> get excited about the new technologies because, oh wow, we can store all this data now for way less. 
and then it becomes a business problem. Okay, well, what do we do with it? You know, who's got the data architecture? What, what's the governance, you know, uh, approach? And what's the business model? And, and what does this mean for new opportunities for us? And those are the really hard problems that people are trying to solve, isn't it? Those are the hard problems. And I think the good news, you know, what we refer to as Hadooponomics is exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. Every, all the data gets stored now, which is great because in the past, so much data was thrown away. And once it's gone, it's gone. So at least now you have the data, but your point is right on, which is, okay, so now what? Just storing the data? There's no value in just storing the data. We need to get at the gold. And how do we get at the gold? Well, it turns out having an analytic engine to get at the gold or having a great search engine to get at the gold, those are really important. And I think from an economic standpoint, what we're seeing is the industry is really starting to value those again, whereas everybody was sort of being commoditized and talking about the lowest price per terabyte. Now the industry is realizing, okay, I know this is good for that, but it's not going to deliver this type of value. And so the, the market is starting to sort itself out, which is a great time for us. And at the same time, a lot of our competitors are long gone. Well, and everybody talks about you know, the digital transformation. HPE at its conferences talks about that. Meg <coughs> you know, is big on that whole theme. Everybody is. And, and the exciting part is digital is data and data can be used in a lot of different ways. And it doesn't have you know, high asset specificity, it can be, it's fungible, it can be used in a lot of different uh, uh, use cases. And it's trying to figure those out, trying to optimize those, understand the value of the data that organizations are now trying to grok. And, um, and they haven't figured it out yet, for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> and But the opportunities are amazing. Well, and, and I think those opportunities, we refer to a lot as the idea economy. And mm. you know, I think Uber's a great example. There's, there's so many great examples. And what I love to think about is, you know, somewhere there is a young girl who's probably in high school, if that, and she is programming right now, somehow, somewhere in the United States. And what she is able to do with her technology and her mind is, like nothing that you could have ever done 10 years ago as a massive organization. And I think that disruption of the idea of economy that somebody, an individual contributor who's not necessarily in the largest corporation can come in and create some innovation that could be so profound and do it for a fraction of what it used to cost. I think that inherently is what is behind the big data movement. It's not just about data, it's really about the programming and the empowerment and all the things that happen. And it's exciting. And there's so many examples that we've had, whether it was Zynga, you know, Uber, Twitter, just customers that are doing these amazing things. You know, data is a huge part of it, but data is only part of it. And it really gets to the culture and the people. Well, that's a great point. We're reshaping the innovation curve in this industry. It used to be, we'd march to the cadence of Moore's Law. And, and now it's like, okay, here's some cheap compute and cheap storage, what can you do with it? And that's where innovation lies. Yep, yeah, okay. once you give people the resources, once you remove the barrier, and somebody can just start creating something for the, at the right price, which has never been cheaper and never been easier for somebody to do, they just start going at it. And, um, and that's just so exciting to see. But one thing we do watch too is that, you know, where Vertica started was getting away from proprietary enterprise data warehouse appliances. And one thing that I find really interesting now, we're going to talk about this at the conference, is as the world shifts to cloud, all of a sudden it looks like the world is moving towards another proprietary dinosaur, you know, getting locked into a single stack. And so something that is very unique to us in this space is that we offer an engine with a lot of choices. You can run it wherever you want. We have great hardware to run it on. We, you can run it on the cloud, many clouds. Uh, you can run it on Hadoop distributions. And I think that choice in the data democratization is going to become more and more important for enterprises to be able to choose the right software but leverage all the innovations that are happening in the ecosystem. Yeah, and we're going to talk about this stuff at the Big Data Conference. Take us through the, the, the week. So, so people are going to be get, getting there, arriving on Monday. Arriving right? Monday, it kicks off really, you know, there's a reception, but then it kicks off on, on Tuesday morning, um, and uh, it will run through midday on Thursday. So we pack a lot into a couple days. Uh, we do leave a lot of time for mingling and people to, to do the networking. Uh, but w as I said, we've got some great keynote speakers, we've got amazing customers, uh, we've got a lot of our partners coming in as well, and uh, I promise you won't get any marketing BS. It's at, it's <laughs> at the seaport in Boston, get some yeah. chowder. Yeah, come see Run us. Run across some legal seafood. Yeah, yeah, come <laughs> see us. It's a great <laughs> spot, place. great spot on the water, and uh, 
if the weather is uh, like it is today, it should be, uh, should be beautiful. This is the best time of the year. We are doing it a little bit later this year in August, and the reason is we want our colleagues and friends from Europe uh, to really be able to attend. Um, last year when it was the beginning of August, actually in every year we've done it at the beginning of August, it's in the middle of uh, you know busy holiday time in, in Europe. So we're doing it a little bit later, but the weather looks to be even better. And uh, come see us in Boston. All right, Colin. Well, thanks for coming out to the SiliconANGLE Media Studios Thank here you. in the East Coast. And really great to see you. We'll yeah. see you next week. You too. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Cube Conversations. This is Dave Vellante. We'll see you next time.